So I really don't feel like doing this, but I have a feeling if I don't, no one else will. So this is the rule change for uh, Louisiana. And it's actually, it's actually a lot worse than I thought it was. <laughs> okay, so um, it's this thick. It's really thick. There's a lot of paper here. I, I took a couple of pages out that just didn't seem relevant. Um, one thing I will say about this, and uh, maybe hit up US Arc if they're not too busy trying to sell t-shirts, is to ask, uh, since this is a role change, does it need to go through the legislative process, or, or can it just... Uh, be an amendment to uh, the current the current law by the uh, secretary of the department of wildlife which I, I as i'm reading this it's looking like it might just be able to uh be a rule change which is really bad if that's the case hopefully i am incorrect on that okay page one wildlife uh and Fisheries Committee, blah, blah, blah. Okay, here's an important part. Page one. The Secretary of the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries has authorized to take any and all necessary steps on behalf of the Commission to promulgate and effectuate this notice of intent. Uh, skipping some stuff. The Secretary is authorized and directed to prepare and transmit a summary report uh, to the Legislative Oversight Committees and file the final rule. I don't, I don't think this actually has to go through the legislative pro process to be passed, which I hope I really hope I'm wrong on that. Um, but that's the first thing I think U.S. ARC needs to clarify. I did call these people today. They are not at work because it's the government. Okay, page two here. Purpose of these regulations are to govern the collection, and this is added. Whenever you're looking at an amendment to any legislation, Anything that's taken out will have a line through it. Anything that's being added, whether it's a like a whole paragraph or whatever, or, or sentence, or even a certain word, it will be underlined. And right here, which I'm sure you can't read, uh, is the word commerce. So this is these regulations are to govern the collection and slash well collection commerce captive maintenance and research and management of native and certain exotic species of reptiles and amphibians. So this, th they're letting you know that this is no longer just something to regulate um, non-commercial uh, aspects of, of, of uh, reptiles and amphibians. New proposal is directly related to commerce. Then it comes down here, blah, blah, blah. Consistent with the constitutional authority and legislative mandates, the Wildlife and Fisheries Commission, whatever, Department of Wildlife and Fisheries, support the following guidelines, principles, and regulations for collectors, buyers slash dealers, and any person handling native species of reptiles and amphibians. So this, this is no longer... What they're saying is they're no longer just dealing with specific labels of people like permitted or somebody that's from the government. It's literally any person. Okay, uh, this is uh, section part B. Okay, here it says, The living conditions of animals held in captivity be uh, appropriate for that species and contribute to their health and well-being. So the housing, feeding and non-medical care of animals will be directed by a person experienced in proper care, handling and use of the species being maintained, and following guidelines according to the AZ's, AZA, which is the Association of Zoo and Aquariums. Um, so that's, that's not very well explained if the AZA guidelines that they have to meet in zoos and so forth will be applied to um, uh, individual keepers and private hobbyists. So that's something else that uh, I think needs kind of uh, spelled out for everyone. Now here's a section that's, that's added 
Um, it is unlawful to release within the state captive or wild captive or wild native or non-native reptiles and amphibians from within or outside the state unless approved by approved and permitted by the department in accordance with something else um, this isn't really something that I would even think need at, needs added uh, it's already illegal to just go around releasing animals so I'm kind of surprised that they added that um, there's another section here that says endangered threatened or restricted now restricted un under this or restricted is underlined so that's added because they're adding a restricted group of animals that we'll get into later so you need to take you need to remember that re or restricted uh, species shall not be removed from the wild uh, which here here's what I find strange about that um, an endangered animal or threatened doesn't necessarily have to be a, a native to Louisiana um, and if it's restricted I, I, it's just a weird, it, it almost makes it illegal to remove something that shouldn't be there to begin with. So they're probably going to have to address that because of how the language is written. It, it's very, it's very stupid how they wrote it and makes it a possible, uh, makes it possible for it to be considered under law illegal to move uh, a threatened or endangered or restricted species found in the wild. So I don't know, um why they would write it like that but that that's a very poor choice of language on their part all right let's see here captive environment shall include necessary features to ensure all physical social and behavioral needs of the species are met that's not proper english such as appropriate enclosure size and ventilation uh natural or appropriate bedding materials uh, covering hides, basking platforms, portable water, water baths. Uh, portable water shall be accessible at all times and appropriate to meet daily requirements. Uh, that that's not that doesn't sound bad because it's not. But if uh, captive environments for private keepers are met to meet the same standards as AZA zoo requirements that'll pretty much make it Im impossible um, here is where they get to um, th this is kind of strange here they get to what's required for snakes turtles lizards and it doesn't specify if this is for okay for science purposes and permitted by the department uh, via scientific research and collecting permits failure to comply with will result in penalties in accordance to subsection L of the of this rule and may result in confiscation of forfeiture of, of subject animals okay so snakes minimum enclosure shall be relative to the length of the body and tail and shall be three-fourths the length on the longest side and one-third the length on the shortest side and in height so um, uh, a 20-foot snake would need a 15 foot enclosure by um what would that be a six foot high and six foot deep to give you an idea but that i don't know what all that applies to i don't know if it's only going to be per uh native stuff that's being collected for scientific use for um restricted and prohibited animals uh but you know they'll get into that then there's some stuff on turtles and tortoises um essentially the same roughly the same type of measurement like lizards are 1.5 length the, the longest side and one times on the shortest and 1.2 on height to give you an idea there frequency of cage cleaning Shh this is underlined shall be adequate to prevent unsanitary conditions or diseases and minimize stress to the animal uh, I mean everyone knows they need to clean their cages but now they're putting it in in into the law that if you have a dirty cage you're in violation and 
you know, they could use that showing up, especially have retics. It's like impossible to, if you have 20 retics, it's almost impossible to have 20 clean cages at any given time because all they do is fuck up their cages. Um, so that, that's kind of a, kind of something that could be easily used against a keeper, uh, and them, you know, just being at work and then, you know, having someone from the, the, the government come look at your cages and see something dirty and use it as a reason to pull your permits and confiscate your animals. Okay. No, no person shall commercially take, possess, sell, trade, barter, exchange, import, or export native turtles. And that's kind of, uh, vague there because import export i don't know if they mean uh you know from the country or from the state yeah they don't they need to clarify that because that honestly doesn't make sense and i also what was strange on this usually in these kind of bills you see a uh they'll have a list of specific words like import export native non-native wild all that kind of stuff with a legal definition and at the end of this uh, i didn't see it it might be somewhere in the full full uh piece of uh legislation being a amend- uh, that's they're currently amending but i i just don't see it anywhere so that that's a, a potential uh issue and th- this is this is relating to turtles as i said um or attempt to commercially take possess sell trade barter exchange import or export native turtles their eggs or any part of and they get into some weird things here, like unless you're a licensed turtle farm under RS uh, 563632 um, and RS 32358.1, uh, which were legally acquired to the effective date of this prohibition or imported legally into the state. And which have proper records documenting legal acquisition. So that's, that means you can't take anything into Louisiana that's native to Louisiana uh, when it comes to turtles or send it out unless you're already a licensed turtle farmer. Uh, I, I don't know much about turtle farming, so this, this doesn't really... I'm not a good one to even speak on this, but somebody in turtles probably needs to read this. Okay, licensed turtle farms to acquire native turtles from the wild for captive breeding purposes only. Uh, LDAF turtle farms that are newly licensed subsequent to the effective date of this rule shall not be eligible for a permit to collect native turtles from the wild. So what that tells me is that this is basically going to create a monopoly uh, for the people already who have these licensing. So that's kind of weird. Uh, And it says each designated agent shall possess a valid reptile amphibian collector's license pursuant to RS uh, uh, 56632.4. And a a copy of the reptile amphibian brookstock collection permit uh, in possession of wild caught turtles. So I, I don't know if that's going to continue to allow the older turtle farms to, to continue to collect a limited amount of um, native tur- turtles strictly for for breeding and not allow any new people to. Uh, start doing that which that's what it looks like to me no ldaf licensed turtle farmer or their designated agents shall have had a title 56 or title 76 class three or higher conviction within three years prior to that application submittal so if you're doing late illegal shady shit you ain't getting this permit for turtles okay No person, this is recreational take and uh, possession limit that we're still on, uh, we're still on turtles here. No person shall collect or possess more than 10 restricted turtles in any combination. So that that means 
that anything and just you you can only have 10 turtles it, you can have 10 of one kind or a variation but it's not allowing you say 10 of one species so that's that's really limiting you to 10 uh, with no individual species to exceed two per person at any time except for alligator snapping turtles which shall be restricted to one per person per day uh, and a possession limit of one unless approved and permitted uh, by the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries. So I, this is more like for like harvesting is how I'm reading this. I'm not 100% sure on that because I didn't take the time to go back and read everything about everything regarding to Louisiana's fish and wildlife, which I'm not doing. Okay, where are we at here? Person engaged in collection and possession of native turtles for recreational purposes, which I'm guessing that's like fishing, hunting, you know, shall possess a basic... Uh, recreational fishing license including a reptile amphibians w wma uh, permit with mandatory reporting for collection uh, on department of wildlife fisheries owned or managed land that shall be required for department state herpetologists or their designees so that is basically them just keeping track of what's being taken out of the wild there is nothing more boring than legal language. More shit on turtles. Here we go. No person shall collect, possess, transport, or, or export prohibited turtles as listed in paragraph G4 herein. That's where you need to go and really look, if you're a turtle person, at this section of the legislation to see what all is really going to be affected. So... Individuals exceeding the possession limit of restricted turtles or in possession of prohibited turtles shall have 120 days from the effective date of this rule to register those turtles with the department state herpetologist. The acquisition of additional turtles is, a, is prohibited until the number of restricted turtles in possession is below the limit set forth her herein. No person with a temporary exemption to possess prohibited turtles shall acquire additional prohibited turtles subsequent to the effective date of this rule or once said turtles have expired. So that means you can't get any more and if you got a temporary license for the ones you have and the ones you have die, you can't, you can't replace them. Permits for restricted prohibited turtles shall be renewed annually and permit holders shall renew their permits within 30 days of expiration date which is i'll tell you what if you ever try to get the government to do anything in 30 days uh that's that like never happens so unless louis louisiana really has a shit together you know i don't <laughs> you're gonna have to be applying reapplying for your for your permits uh before that 30 days for sure Facility housing prohibited turtles shall be open to inspection as requested prior to the issuance of a permit and at other times deemed necessary. So that means you're giving up your right to privacy, essentially. If you're, if you're going to work with this, then the government basically has the right to come onto your property and search your shit at any given time. It is unlawful to collect, possess, transport, or export any turtles designated as endangered or threatened pursuant to the Endangered Species Act of 1973. Now, this is this is kind of fucked up because this says collect, possess, transport, or export any turtles designated as endangered or threatened. And under CITES... Uh, there's the agreement with a lot of endangered stuff from other countries. Like the reason you can't take a, an Indian python across state lines is because it's considered considered endangered uh, or threatened or whatever. So I think it's considered endangered or protected. So under if if this goes into law with no amendment saying that in relative to endangered or threatened turtles native to Louisiana then you can't even own any turtle uh, under the Endangered Species Act. 
any turtle that's listed. I don't know if they realize that, but if I'm not a lawyer, but it is unlawful to collect, possess, transport, or export any turtle designated as endangered or threatened pursuant to the Endangered Species Act of 1973. I don't see any other way to interpret that legally than to say anything on the Endangered Species Act under endangered or threatened is illegal to possess. Yeah, there's just no there's just no way around that. That's just how it reads. Uh, that that's extremely disturbing and potentially a giant disaster legally for every for people, including including uh louisiana lawmakers uh if you want to look up the uh, you can just type in endangered species act but it's under 16 uh usc i think like section 35 okay possession of two or more box turtles regardless of species is prohibited huh there you go okay more turtle shit in all instance except with regards to turtle farms Farmers licensed through LDAF while operating in accordance with their applicable licenses, it shall be unlawful to engage in captive breeding activities of native turtles or to release captive turtles. So, unless you're a licensed turtle farmer, a hobbyist can't breed anything native, turtle-wise. Offspring from unauthorized captive breeding activities shall be surrendered to the department. Uh, It doesn't say what they're going to do with them, though. So if you accidentally breed your turtles, uh, you got to turn them over to the government, at which point they probably kill them. And there is a long list of restricted turtles, snapping turtles, alligator snapping turtles, Mississippi mud turtles, razor-backed musk turtles, eastern musk turtles. Uh, Southern Painted, I mean, dude, there's just a massive list uh, of just turtles. And prohibited turtles, listen to this, this is prohibited turtles. Oh, where, where was the, where was the fucking, hold on, let me find it. They were like, you can't own like a, a leatherback or a hawkbill or, or like, it's like, we already know you can't own that. You don't need to put that in your Louisiana legislation. You already can't just go get a leatherback turtle. Like, this is a waste of ink. Nuisance Wildlife Control Operators, NWCO, as permitted through Department in accordance with LAC 76V127 and the rules therein, shall be exempt f- from take and possession limits. Uh, so they are allowed to remove animals, um, and they're not, you know, if they have more than what you're technically allowed to have in possession, it's okay because it's kind of their job to move shit around. Okay, NWCO uh, permittees uh, are only authorized to live trap, relocate, live trap, and euthanize or lethally trap reptiles, amphibians that are not protected by federal law. So, but here's the thing about federal law. If they're covered under 16 U.S.C. 35, I believe is what that the endangered animals that that could be a problem that would mean they'd have no no ability to to move or relocate animals um animals that are not euthanized may not be released uh on department owned or managed lands and may not be sold bartered or exchanged i'm not sure what that would leave what options that would leave for nuisance wildlife control operators um if they can't do anything with it and they're not allowed to release them on uh, department owned or managed land which is basically public land I'm not exactly sure what they're supposed to do with these uh, with these with these animals they're catching when namely turtles okay private landowners may harvest red-eared sliders considered a nuisance on private property owned by landowner so you can just go to town on red-eared sliders Given that said turtles are humanely euthanized in accordance with AVMA guidelines and shall not be transported or released off-site. Uh, you know, one of the things that I've always had a problem with at reptile shows was the little little quarter-round fucking baby red-eared sliders and all this other stuff that were just people just 
pumped out tons of for five bucks a piece. Um, and now red-eared sliders are invasive all over the place. So this is just another example of us just self-destructing. That's all, that's all this. I mean, you know, we wonder why the government keeps doing these things. And, you know, we wonder why Florida is a fucking mess. It might be because there's thousands of fucking thousands upon thousands of invasive reptiles there because of us. I wonder if that has anything to do with it. This, this is just a list. Um, what I'm going through, this is just a list of all different animals that are either considered uh, native, non-native, um, that are all regulated. A bunch of turtles, a bunch of, just all reptiles and amphibians. Let me, uh, I'm not reading all of this. If anybody wants to read it, they can go read it. Yeah, there's a, there's a ton of stuff. All right, where are we at here? Ooh, the species listed in paragraph J4 herein may be captured for research purposes deemed acceptable by the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries. I don't think we really need to get into that too much. Uh, but license requirement for a reptile and amphibian collector's license is required to commercially collect and sell native reptiles and amphibians. Uh, and this is this is what's strange here. This is this is all underlined, so this would be added that you need a, a reptile collector's license to, uh, to, for commercially collective and sell native reptiles and amphibians. A reptile and amphibian wholesaler, wholesaler retail dealer's license is required for purchasing or acquiring native reptiles and amphibians from within or outside the state for sell or resell or possessing native reptiles and amphibians for propagation for sale in accordance with SR 56632.5. So uh, anybody, I'm not, I'm not jumping into RS 56, uh, 632.5. Uh, this is, that's somebody from Louisiana can get into that shit. Reptile amphibian collectors and, and reptile amphibian wholesaler dealers license shall be acquired from the department state herpetologist. So you got to go to them. Okay. And now let's go to. All persons selling native, captive reared reptiles and amphibians, regardless of numbers of generation removed from the wild, shall be required to possess a reptile and amphibian retailer, wholesaler retailer dealer's license pursuant to RS uh, 56632.5.B. Okay, then there's, there's a new thing on, you can't take bullfrogs less than five inches long. Organize events that wantonly or willfully waste native amphibians or reptiles are prohibited. I don't know what that means for sure, but I think that means something like a rattlesnake roundup that you see like in Texas or somewhere. Um, that's the only thing I could think that, that this would apply to, to say that you can't just round up a bunch of shit and kill them for, an, for like an event. Um, waste native amphibians. I mean, I just... I think the word waste there needs change to clarify that, but that's actually a good thing that you can't get a bunch of dumb rednecks together and kill a bunch of shit. Okay. And here is another big list of stupid shit that's all listed. Okay. Non-native amphibians and reptiles and all venomous snakes, which are also reptiles, so I'm not sure why they had to add that. Restricted snakes. The import importation private possession and this is new this is what's added here selling and or purchasing the selling and or purchasing is, is the underlined part that was added uh, restricted snakes was added to the to the beginning of this uh, of constrictor snakes in excess of eight feet which is including but not limited to the following species Papuan olives, uh, olive pythons, uh, carpet and diamond pythons. Uh, they have king horn eye on here, which I don't know why they always use king horn eye. We don't have them. Uh, Morelia amethystine python. Um, yeah, got natalensis on here, sabe on here. They had more uh, Indian or Burmese python, and they took it out. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why, but they did. Uh, I think uh, then they said any 
and then they got reticulated python any species of the genus boa boa constrictors and any species of eunectes with any so any anaconda and venomous snakes as defined in subparagraph k1a herein herein after restricted snakes obtained in any manner shall only be allowed via permit issued by the department of fisheries except for animals kept by certified zoos and aquariums and other facilities approved by the department including universities accredited research center centers natural nature centers animal sanctuaries blah 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 okay so this is title 7 chapter 54 2132 e large constrictors and venomous species listed within subparagraph k2 a herein are prohibited prohibited from possession importation selling and purchasing a restricted snake permit is required for possession of large constrictors listed within subparagraph k2c herein regardless of size and length so if you're within k2 which i think i either got to go forward or backwards to get it that's going to be all that's going to be all your basically all your big snakes uh regard even if they're hatchlings you still need to permit okay venomous snakes any species under current uh standing recognized to belong to the families uh, it's just it's just everything yeah yeah including sea snakes so you can't get your sea snakes so all your your vipers pit vipers elapids everything permit requirements possession of restricted snakes is prohibited except as authorized via a restricted snake permit by the department restricted snake permits shall expire annually which is uh the 31st day of december which is a horrible day because there's nobody at work at the government and must be renewed within 30 days of the expiration date any individual who remains non-compliant after 30 days shall forfeit restricted snakes to the uh shall re shall forfeit restricted snakes to and they they kind of crossed out department of wildlife and fisheries and left it in personnel who may dispose of the snakes per department policy and they'd crossed out in any manner because that meant they could just kill them any way they wanted so it's it's saying right here if you lapse on your permit uh and go more than 30 days uh, you're in violation of the law and the you have to give your snakes to the, to the government at which time they kill them any person requesting a permit to allow importation and or private possession of venomous snakes shall demonstrate no less than one year of substantial practical experience to consist of no less than 500 hours in the care feeding handling and or husbandry of the species for which the permit is sought or other species within the same zoological family which are subsequently similar in size characteristic care nutritional requirements to the species for which the permit is sought so th this is this is a hard one for me because um how 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 are you going to get the practice you're going to have to find somebody in your state and work with them for a year and get them to sign off and then get the government to agree that you have demonstrated one one full year worth of working with these animals and it's only going to cover whatever species or genus or whatever that you worked with so um that's kind of kind of tough uh, for the purpose of demonstrating compliance applicants shall submit documentation of such required experience including a detailed description of the experience acquired the dates and time frames of the experience 
was was obtained and the specific locations where it was acquired and references with no less than two individuals having personal knowledge of the stated experience. So you got to get someone to sign off for the government. Documented educational experience in zoology or other rev relevant biological sciences obtained at a college or technical school level or above may substitute for up to 250 hours of a of their required experience. Which I don't think that's right. Going to school like ugh, that's that's not the same as hands-on experience. That's actually kind of dangerous in my opinion. The Department of Wildlife and Fisheries shall be responsible for judgment of the adequacy of the documentation. So they're going to say you hand them documentation, they're going to decide if it's adequate or not. And they're not giving you the, the the metric by which they're making that judgment. So that's... Good luck on getting one of these fucking permits. That's all I can say. Notification of relocation of facility shall be made within 30 days of a move. And blah, blah, blah. That's... Yeah, that's nothing major. In the event of, a, a, of an escape where a constrictor snake in excess of 8 feet or a venomous snake escapes its cage and its secure containment room and becomes outside the control of the permit holder and or owner, notification shall immediately be made to the department uh, uh, a 24-hour hotline number. Okay. Then there's containers shall be... Secure containers shall be required when transporting restricted snakes. So that's a big thing. You got to make sure your snakes... Restricted, restricted snakes shall be kept in secure escape proof enclosures with doors that lock there's nothing wrong with that that's just common sense said enclosure shall be kept in, in secure escape proof rooms or outbuildings nothing wrong with that when restricted snakes are being fed the cages are being cleaned or are otherwise worked by the person trained and experienced in proper care, handling and use of this species to be maintained. So th what they're saying is, unless you're, you're like, you can't, like, I, this is actually kind of saying that, like, if your friend comes over and wants to see the snake, like, it might not even be allowed to, like, you can't even, like, get it out to show somebody. I don't know. That it's, it's saying restricted snakes shall be kept in a secure, locked enclosure in a locked room. And outside of feeding, cleaning, or otherwise worked by the per person trained or ex and experienced in proper care handling and use of these species being maintained. So uh, that that could become an issue if you let someone who doesn't have their required 500 hours and permit um, around your animals. But to get the permit, somebody needs to work with them. I don't know. Th this is this language sucks. This language is is, is garbage. They really need to go through and rewrite this. Facilities that house constrictor snakes in excess of eight feet or venomous snakes in private possession shall be open to inspection prior to issuance of a permit and at any other times deemed necessary to ensure permit compliance by Department of Wildlife and Fishery personnel and other persons authorized by the department to perform, to perform such inspections. Well, here, here's the one thing about this. It said it, the original language was by by other persons authorized by the Department of Fisher of Wildlife and Fisheries. They crossed that out and wrote authorized by the by the to perform such inspections. They forgot some words there. Uh, license requ license requirement: a reptile and amphibian wholesale retailer dealer's license is required for purchasing and acquiring restricted snakes. As defined under paragraph K, uh, K1 herein from within or outside the state for sale or resale or possessing restricted snakes for propagation for sale in accordance with that RS uh, 56.632.5. Prohibited and restricted non-native reptiles and amphibians. The following non-native reptile and amphibian species are prohibited from in importation, possession, sell, attempting to sell, 
transfer, that means you can't give it from one person to another, release and reproduction in the state due to the potential risk of, esta of establishment in the wild and detrimental hazard to native wildlife and public health and safety. A few more ants than they needed. Individuals in possession of species listed in subparagraph K2A herein shall have 120 days from the effective date of this rule to register those animals with the department and acquire a permit. Uh, the first one is all crocodilians. <laughs> uh, all species of, of all the water monitors, Nile monitors, savannah monitors, green iguanas, brown anoles, Burmese pythons, stiletto snakes for all those stiletto snake farms, um, boom slangs, massive amounts of stuff. Permits to register prohibited non-native Reptiles and amphibians shall be renewed every two years. The permit holder shall renew the permit within 30 days of expiration date. Facilities housing prohibited non-native reptiles and amphibians shall be open to inspection by Department of Wildlife and Fishery personnel as requested prior to issuance of the permit and at any other times deemed necessary to ensure permit compliance by department personnel and other persons authorized by the department for such to perform such inspections once again getting this permit means you have no right to tell people they can't come on your property no person with a temporary exemption to pro possess prohibited non-native reptiles or amphibians species shall shall acquire more prohibited non-native reptiles or amphibian species and will not be reissued a permit once said animal has expired so if you have something that's considered prohibited what that means is you have every two years you have to renew your license to keep it or the state comes and kills it and you have to do that until it dies no person shall transfer possession a prohibited non-native reptile and amphibian species except to the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries or as designated agent. Now here's a problem. Here's This is a huge problem. That means say like you're getting older or you get hurt or something like that. You're not allowed to find a good home for your animal. You're not allowed to rehome your animal. You have to give it to the state at which point the state will most likely euthanize the animal um, your house burns down there's a flood there's all these potential issues and you're not allowed to find a proper home for this animal so that that's a huge issue that i think uh maybe the great usr could uh could maybe address um tell people to really talk about uh Prohibited, anim prohibited animals, as defined in subparagraph uh, K2A herein, which are permitted under temporary exemption, may not be used for breeding purposes. Persons or businesses in possession of prohibited non-native reptiles or amphibians for commercial sales have 120 days from the effective date of the rule to sell said inventory or surrender said inventory to the department. This is huge too, because that means if you're a licensed dealer and selling animals that become prohibited, you only have 120 days to get rid of them and you cannot get a permit for them if I'm reading this right because you are a business persons or businesses in possession of prohibited for commercial sale if you have any of these prohibited animals with the intent for commercial sale for business activities for commerce you have to get rid of them in 120 120 days with exceptions to the grace period provided in subparagraph k2a 
herein possession of prohibited reptiles and amphibian species shall only be allowed for scientific research, educational exhibition, and control or eradication purposes via the department issued permit. I, I just, yeah, I they're going to allow keep. I I don't see how a, a private individual can get the get the license, but a business can't. So th- I think that's some language that really needs cleared up uh, and to make some sense. The following restriction restricted non-native species may be in possession only via permit to be approved and monitored by the department facilities that house restricted non-native species shall be open to inspection prior to the issuance of the permit that's we are it's just the same shit individual individuals in possessions of species listed under uh, k2c here herein shall have 120 days from the effective date of the rule to register those animals with the department and acquire a permit if in the event of escape of a restricted non-native reptile or amphibian species department personnel should be notified immediately via the department of wildlife fishery 24-hour hotline you call the hotline and that would be boa constrictors retics afrox southern afrox all species of anaconda asian water monitor brown tree snake brown basculus i didn't know louisiana had a brown basculus Gray spiny tail iguana, northern curly tail lizard. I don't know. There's a bunch of shit on here. No person shall. This is weird. No person shall possess, display, or exhibit restricted snakes as listed in paragraph K1 and subparagraph K1A, or restricted non-native species as listed in subparagraph K2C in public spaces except permitted by the department no person shall import transport into the state any non-native species of reptile or amphibian listed as injurious under the the u.s fish and wildlife service lacy act 18 usc 42 and all associated roles therein except as permitted by the department so uh anything on the lacy act that's a amphibian or reptile can no longer go into the state um then it not only becomes because they're making that would become a state law uh it's automatically a lacy act felony so you get a you're getting a double violation you're getting a state law violation and you're getting a uh you're getting a uh, lacy act violation as well non-native amphibians and reptiles that are legally possessed shall be surrendered to the department of wildlife and fisheries and euthanized per department policy so they're just they're putting it right here in black and white they're just going to kill all this shit Okay, therefore, in the event of a release or escape of a captive non-native reptile, the department may assess all expenses incurred from the capture, transport, housing, veterinary care, or other applicable expenses associated with the escaped animal to the owner. So when the government goes out and spends $10,000 to catch an iguana, you are getting the bill. Provider impact statement, it says... The provider impact statement. This would be what the uh, the people enforcing this would. This would be the state. The this proposed rule has no known impact on providers as described in HCR 170 of 2014. Uh, and that's not really the case because this is going to put this is going to require more people at Fish and Wildlife to deal with these issues once they make all this shit illegal. So. I, that's a lot of legal stuff that doesn't make a lot of sense um, unless you reread it a couple times but it's what it's saying is you're basically gonna have to have licensing for a lot of stuff um, anything that's Lacey Act listed is now illegal which is not a surprise because when USARC won the interstate commerce lawsuit 
It made everything on the Lacey Act legal to go across state lines unless it was prohibited in the state that it's coming from or the state it was going to, uh, which I said was going to be a giant problem back in 2015, which you can go read it on Fauna. I explained, uh, this isn't a surprise to me. I said that the that the U.S. ARC lawsuit was going to 100% cause the U.S. Fish and Wildlife to try to get an amendment to the Lacey Act to gain even more power, which they have, and that it was going to cause a massive amount of issues for the states and the trying to stay in, t- in a general compliance with federal regulations, with interstate uh, and other states' regulations. The easiest way for everyone to get on board and, and have the same language in their in their uh, reptile amphibian uh, laws is to adopt the same language. So that's why you see so many states that have adopted the language of the Lacey Act. They have done this because of U.S. ARC's lawsuit, which I warned about. The only thing the U.S. ARC needed to do was prove that those snakes didn't need listed. And that U.S. ARC will tell you that that is a lost cause. But the truth is there is a there is a section in the Lacey Act that gives states the right to make stuff illegal to enter into their state, which then makes it a Lacey Act violation for that animal to enter into their state. And the reason that was given to states was because... There are so many different climates in this country, and what can live in Florida can't live in Pennsylvania. So there is no need for a nationwide ban on Burmese pythons or reticulated pythons or anything like that because they can't live in 99.9% of the country. That's why the Lacey Act had a separate section to designate states' rights to regulate what they saw fit and what was best for their environment. There was never a piece of legislation that added those animals to the Lacey Act. It was done via executive order with shit science. They did not have the science to back it. And the only way for this stuff to stop is for U.S. ARC or somebody to take the government back to court and try to get those snakes removed from the Lacey Act because there's really no scientific evidence for that need. And when you look at something like um, the legislation that got reintroduced to amend the Lacey Act to cover uh, interstate commerce, you know, U.S. ARC tells everybody to say all this dumb shit about keepers and responsible people and like, you know, we and it's bad for business. No, this is the only question you need to point out when you're talking to these legislators that want to do things like amend the Lacey Act to cover interstate commerce. Ask them to explain to you how making it so somebody who takes a, a reticulated python from North Dakota to South Dakota is in any way causing a detrimental impact with Burmese pythons in the Florida Everglades. And what does it do to solve the Burmese python in the Florida Everglades by putting someone in prison for taking a reticulated python from North Dakota to South Dakota? It does nothing to solve the problem. The whole direction to which U.S. ARC has taken this entire industry and its methodology in fighting this stuff is why it keeps getting worse they are approaching this from the wrong angle and they have been they've gotten a little better but it's just like this as as far as i know this is a role change i i hope i'm wrong but i don't think it needs to go through the legislative process i hope i'm wrong because if it does it's horribly written it's got way too many questions, it, and it, and it's in some cases contradictory. So uh, that's the question that needs answered here: is first, is this just a rule change, or is this a legislative process? And what are the legal avenues to to approach this? 
you know, this is eight, we're talking an eight foot law now. That wipes out everything. Rat snakes get eight feet. I think I missed it, but there's a section there that says not just individual animals that are eight feet, but species that have the ability to reach eight feet or larger. That's a ton of stuff. Um, I hope that cleared that up a little bit on what's in that bill. I know it's a lot of just gibberish. Well, what's it's just legal jargon. Uh, but what it would mean, would at least for the retics, no more retics gone into um, into Louisiana, and uh, it, it's not good. 